Good afternoon, friends. At the very outset, I would like to thank the organizers for having given me this wonderful opportunity, particularly Dr. Rajiv Chawla and Dr. Shalini Chabgi, to present before you a talk on a hypothetical clinical scenario, but I'll actually discuss a few clinical cases. So what do you do if a 16-year-old girl presents to you with hyperglycemia? So I'll discuss about five cases or so. So the first is a 16-year-old girl, Pooja, who's on summer vacation visiting her grandparents in Kolkata. Her grandmother noticed that she's been getting thinner in spite of eating well. She's been very thirsty, but it is thought that it's been because she's been playing out in the sun for several hours. One late afternoon, her friends come in saying that she's fainted and she's rushed to the hospital. And in the hospital, the blood glucose readings are very high, close to 480. Ketones are positive and bicarbonates are low. She's admitted in the ICU and treated for diabetic ketoacidosis. Her grandparents have diabetes. And the C-peptide test which was done was very low. And both GAD65 and IA2 antibodies were done which were negative. So should she undergo additional tests to establish the diagnosis of diabetes? Right. <laughs> So the diagnosis here is essentially an antibody negative type 1 diabetes or what we call type 1B diagnosis, diabetes. And if you look at the antibodies over a period of time, the antibodies can actually dwindle. And we know at present there are about 20 different kinds of antibodies that can be tested. And the mere fact that two of them are negative does not necessarily mean that the individual is actually antibody negative. I'm not showing one of them if they are up to age 25. So that tells us a significant proportion of our kids will actually have type 2 diabetes. These are some of our own children from our cohort. And you know, because I have an interest in FCPD and because I have an interest in secondary diabetes, secondary to hemoglobinopathies, therefore probably I have a significant proportion of people who are in that particular age group. Otherwise, you can see the major chunk is actually type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. And that's probably because in our cohort, diabetes in young is defined as up to age 25. So if you look at our own data, for example, the Kolkata Young Diabetes Study, we actually included individuals who are up to age of 30. So that could be one reason why there's a difference in the proportion of the various subgroups of diagnosis. So in our cohort, we actually had a relatively lower prevalence of type 1. That's because of the older age group cutoff that we use, and we had a high prevalence of type 2 diabetes. And like I said, I have a bias in the sense that I look after a significant number of people with FCPD and secondary diabetes. And a significant proportion of patients with suspected MODI were also there in our group. So as clinicians, if you're trying to look at how to differentiate type 1 from type 2 diabetes, Look at C-peptide, look at age cutoffs, and look at lipid profiles and liver function tests. So I've already discussed, if you have a preserved C-peptide and a raised triglyceride and low HDL and abnormal lipid profile, you think of type 2 diabetes. This is the only other study that I could lay my hands on from Andrew Hattersley's group, which also talks about C-peptide and age and time to insulin as the most discriminatory features between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We also published some data looking at individuals with type 1 diabetes who had other features of metabolic syndrome, the so-called double diabetes, who usually tend to have greater requirement of insulin, metformin might be needed, they have a much more aggressive disease and are much more likely to have more complications as compared to pure type 1 or pure type 2 diabetes. The third is a 16-year-old girl again who presented with malaise and frequent urination has gradually put on weight over the last few years. Parents and grandparents have a history of diabetes. And on investigation, we find that the fasting and the PP is high, as well as the A1C is high. C-peptide was done, which was lowish normal. And after discussion with the parents, she was started on insulin. She remained on four months following diet exercise, but still remained on insulin. Now, therefore, you've got to figure out if a low normal C-peptide is there in an individual, what do you think of? Number one, it could well be type 2 diabetes. It could well be an evolving type 1 diabetes. It could be MODI. It could be double diabetes and what we call latent autoimmune diabetes in young or what we call as lady. 
So we did a repeat C peptide because we thought that it could be lowish because of glucotoxicity. And it came back again as low, lowish normal, antibodies were positive. So this is a case of latent autoimmune diabetes in young. So that's the diagnostic criteria. Got always got to remember that autoantibodies might be falsely positive as well. And cutoff point of age is usually more than 15 years. The fourth is again a 16 year old girl presenting with diabetes for six months with very high glucose levels, but no ketoacidosis, low BMI and uncontrolled with OADs. And that's the x-ray showing the classical calcification of hydrocalculus pancreatic diabetes. And remember that not all young onset diabetes is type 1. Do remember FCPD. Remember FCPD even if the child is not very lean. Screen all young diabetics with an ultrasound or an x-ray to exclude FCPD and also screen family members. These individuals usually require low amount of insulin initially might respond to OHS. Ketosis is less common. And remember, you might have to screen them for malignancies of the pancreas in later life. So what we were taught as young students, that has probably changed over a period of time in terms of FCPD. The next, again, a 16-year-old girl who'd gone for a school excursion and there fell unwell. She had an upper respiratory tract sickness prior to it. Blood glucose were very high. There was no ketone. She was treated with IV fluids and sent back to Kolkata where she was evaluated in a corporate diabetes center, evaluated with antibodies and C-peptide, and she was told that she's got type 2 diabetes and started on metformin. Her father, grandfather, and great-grandfather all have type 2 diabetes, and her maternal aunt has type 1 diabetes. She does not tolerate metformin and was asked to start insulin. She came to us for another opinion. We found that the weight was at the 75th centile. There was no marker of insulin resistance, had normal lipid profiles and liver function tests. So this is a classic scenario where you've got to think of maturity onset diabetes in young. She's an early onset diabetes, not requiring insulin, and you've got three generations having diabetes in young age. So before the age 25, one, or preferably two members having diabetes, and does not require insulin initially, C-peptide is measurable, and best is you find three generations of diabetes. So who do you think should undergo a MODI testing? If you find that you have a diagnosis which is suggestive of so-called type 2 diabetes with detectable C-peptide with one or more of the following. Either the body weight is normal or mildly overweight with no signs or symptoms of insulin resistance and no features of metabolic dysfunction. Think of maturity onset of diabetes in young. So I'm not going into the details of, the, of how you go about doing the genetic tests. So in our clinical setup, it's important that we take a good family history, look at the rapidity of onset of the disease, look at whether ketosis is there, look at whether the patient can be treated without insulin, and look at response to OHA. Very important, look at glycemic variability, because that gives you a clue to the degree of insulinopenia. On clinical examination, look for weight, BMI, particularly BMI centiles, features of malnutrition, which would be there in FCPD, and features of insulin resistance. In terms of the investigation, look for ketoacidosis or acidosis. Lipids are very important. Liver function test is important. So is uric acid. X-ray abdomen to find whether there are stones. Ultrasound of the liver, pancreas, and kidney, both for FCPD as well as for various forms of MODI. C-peptide is very useful. And in only select cases, look for antibodies and MODI testing. So all that I've said is actually summarized in this final summary table which looks at all of these various aspects to help you arrive at a diagnosis and subsequent management. I think I've tried to be as brief as possible and try to explain within 15 minutes the various forms of diabetes that can happen in a girl of this age. So with that, I shall stop and take any questions if there are. Thank you very much.